الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وما توفيقنا ولا اعتصامنا إلا بالله ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله أجمعين وارض اللهم عن جميع الصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعل جمعنا هذا جمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا ولا معنا شقيا ولا مطرودا ولا محروما اللهم لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم العظيم ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا هما إلا فرجته ولا مريضا إلا شافيته وعافيته ولا أسيرا إلا فككته أسره ولا سجينا إلا إلى أهله رددته ولا حاجة لك فيها رضا ولنا فيها خيرا إلا رقضيتها لا يا رب العالمين عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله وأحثكم على طاعته وامتثال أوامره واجتناب نواهيه وأستفتح بالذي هو خير أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters Many us in many cultures When we have our houses, our dwellings When we set our places We have a special room a room that we keep clean, a room that we put special decorations in, a room that we keep comfort things in. We make it very hospitable for guests. And that is almost in every culture especially cultures that are known for their hospitality, for receiving guests. The majlis, the mazar, the guest room. And you often see that that place is the best place in the house. Often children are not even allowed to be there to disrupt a place. You'll find the most comfortable sofas there. The most beautiful furniture there. The best ornaments are in there. Because it's a well-kept place. The house owner likes that place to be always looking the best. Because it's the place for special guests. For those the house owner like to honor in his or her own house. In a traditional and a classic Arab culture, they had that concept. And they would call that place al ghurfa it was that place that was unique. It was the place that they would honor people in. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked to us about the Jannah. And Allah says many things about Jannah. Mathalul Jannah. We can't imagine Jannah. We, we really cannot know what is in Jannah. So Allah says, the parable of Jannah, the example of Jannah. Because in Al-Jannah, ma la aynun ra'at, wa la udhunun sama'at, wa la khatar ala qalbi bashar. An eye cannot see, an ear cannot hear, a mind cannot imagine what's in Jannah. 
And then in Jannah, Allah says, there is a special place. Ghurufat. Even in Jannah, Allah has, there is a special place that he prepared for special guests. And Allah then called it Al-Ghurfa. Just like you would have a special place, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى In your house for special people, Allah says, even in that Jannah, there is a special Ghurfa for special guests. And if that doesn't get our attention, to know who those people are. I don't know what can be. And one might think, are these, are these the prophets? Are these the messengers of Allah? Are these the shuhada? Are these the siddiqoon? Who are these people? Who will have al ghurfa Could it be people like you and me? Could we even aspire to dwell in those ghurufat one day? And we go to Surah Al-Furqan. And Allah tells us who is going to be in the, who's going to be in al ghurufat Allah says they are servants of Allah. They're people like you and me. We ask Allah to be of them. Allah calls them Ibadur Rahman. Allah says, Wa ibad Rahman illadina yamshuna ala al ardi hauna. Wa ida khatabahum ul jahiluna kalu salama. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Allah starts describing a group of people. And he starts by saying, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ One of the very first description of that group is they are عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ Allah makes them his own. This is from the very beginning an honor bestowed upon this group. So we can pay more attention to the description that will come after. And then he attaches them to a rahma And then to one of his most glorious names, a rahman From the very beginning, honor upon honor, upon nobility. Allah is preparing them for the ghurfa. Allah is preparing them to get into that place. And Allah says, here's their description. الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا When you think about these people, they're going to be in the highest places, at the highest levels, close to Ar-Rahman, when you see them here, you can't even tell. Because when you see them walking here on the face of the earth, they walk with ease, with humbleness. They're very humble people. يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا Allah does not like arrogant people. And that way they walk on earth can, according to the scholars of tafsir, is the way they walk, literally, they walking. And also, al-mashi fil-ard is their way of life. It can mean two things. Their physical walk 
and their way of life. They're humble. They themselves and their heart and their behavior and their dealing with other people, they don't see themselves as any better than anybody else. They don't see themselves as more righteous than anybody else. They don't see themselves worthy of any more honor than anybody else. يمشون على الأرض هنا. تواضع. ومن تواضع لله رفعه الله. And those who humble themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will elevate them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, was known for his walking, for the way he walked. Abu Huraira radiallahu an used to say, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أسرع الناس مشيا ما رأيت أحدا أسرع مشية من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وكأنما الأرض تطوى له The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم had a purposeful walk He always walked like he always had a purposeful He would walk for a goal He wouldn't just stroll down and he always walked with humbleness. And you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of arrogant people about the way they walk. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ And do not walk on earth in insolence and pride. Allah does not like every arrogant, proud person. So walking on earth can be the physical walk or can be the way of life. And one of the very first description of those who are Ibad rahman they're humble. They see themselves no better than anybody else. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رب معصية تتبعها توبة خير من طاعة يتبعها كبر. This is a very important hadith, but sometimes it needs to be thought of very deeply so it couldn't be misunderstood. The Prophet ﷺ said, A sin followed by Humble repentance is better than ta'a, than an act of obedience, yet ba'uha kibar, followed by arrogance. Meaning someone had an act of obedience, made qiyam al-layl. And then the next morning he walks into a gathering and he looks around and he said, I am better than all of these guys who did not make qiyam. In his heart, even if he did not say a word, if he thought of himself or herself as better than anybody else, they are following in the footsteps of shaitan who said to Allah when he was faced with Adam, Ana khayrun min, I am better than him. And the Prophet ﷺ said, this ta'a, this act of obedience that puts in the heart a little bit of arrogance that I am better. No, a sin that leaves inkisar, a sin that leaves humbleness, that leaves guilt, that leaves an incentive to be better, is better to that person than the ta'a. That is not to say that someone should go and commit sins. But we should avoid the feeling 
if we are better, even in ta'at, even when we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if we are ubad, عباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا. And how do they deal with others? How is their muamala with other people? وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلامة. And when they are addressed by الجاهلون, by the ignorant. Which means when they are attacked, when they are being rubbed the wrong way, when they are being wronged, قالوا salama, They respond in peace. And that is not out of their weakness. That is not because they cannot respond in another way. It is because they... Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran. Idfa' billati hiya ahsan. Fa'idha alladhi baynaka wa baynahu adawatun ka'annahu waliyun hami. Repel with the better way. You repel evil with good. That's the better response. That's the better way. Id'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idati al hasana wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan. When you want to call for the way of Allah, call with wisdom, with good advice. وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنٌ And if you want to have a discussion, when you want to have a debate, do it in the best way possible. And that's when they are dealing with الجاهلين. That's when they are dealing with the harsh people. That's when they are dealing with the enemy. That's when they are dealing with the ignorant people. That's not when they're dealing with their brothers and sisters. That's not when they're dealing with their own people in their own community. That's not when they're dealing with their own family. That's not when they're dealing with their own spouses. If that's how they deal with the ignorant, how should they deal with those who are close to them? وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Now I need to comment on this verse because sometimes this very verse can be misused and وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ abused and especially amongst Muslims. A Muslim come to another Muslim and try to talk to him and the other Muslim say, Salam. In essence, he's calling him an ignorant. He's calling him a jahil. He's cursing him through Quran. He's using the Quran to insult his brother or his sister. وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ Taking the verse and using the reverse of it. The idea, وَإِذَا خَطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سلاما, is to turn a bad situation into a good situation. Is to turn a hostile situation into a peaceful encounter. قالوا سلاما means they respond in a peaceful way. And wallahi, I heard people literally say that word intentionally to insult others. Said, I'm not going to respond. You're an ignorant person. I'm just going to say peace. Like Allah taught me to say. Because I'm from Ibad al-Rahman and you're ignorant. So if you talk to me, I'll just say peace. So when somebody talked to them, he said, 
I'm not going to respond to you. I'll just say salam. Wallahi, beware, brothers, of, of doing that. This is exactly what this verse tells you not to do. Exactly what Allah does not want you to do with al jahileen with the ignorant, not with your own brothers and sisters in Islam. وَالَّذِينَ يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا And then, they have a special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَبِيتُونَ لِرَبِّهِمْ سُجَّدًا وَقِيَامًا Al-Bayat is the night time. So in the daytime, Allah describes their behavior and how they live. They're humble. They're very unassuming people. You can't tell who they are. They're, they're virtually unrecognizable. They're amongst us, but you probably don't know who they are. They're not the stars. And they don't get in trouble too much. They always respond in peace. And at night time, they have a very secretive, special relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the beginning, he describes them as his own. Ibadur Rahman. They, they're my people. They're mine. They have a special place in Jannah called Al Ghurfa. And they work for it at night time. They build it. It's the Prophet وسلم, that recommended. That if you are to have any special connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do it when people are asleep. And you tell no one about it. نِعْمَ الرَّجُلُ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرْ لَوْ أَنَّهُ يَقُومُ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ The best man, Abdullah ibn Umar, if he prays at night. And Abdullah ibn Umar was a teenager. Teenager at that time, a very young teenager. Abdullah ibn Umar never slept one night in full after that hadith. Not one night for the rest of his life. And while they're doing that, they're worshiping Allah at night, they're not in a state of mind that they think. Oh, alhamdulillah, I am good. I have a lot of credit now with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think I'm in good shape. So I ask, I'm going to make dua for Allah to increase my grades in Jannah. To put me in the highest grades in Firdaus. That's not how they think, these people. الَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا أَتَوَ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَا they're actually, their hearts are never satisfied that they are fulfilling their obligation. You know what the dua is while they're doing that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا صْرِفْ عَنَّا عَذَابَ جَهَنَّمْ إِنَّ عَذَابَهَا كَانَ غَرَامًا إِنَّهَا سَاءَتْ مُسْتَقَرَّ وَمُقَامًا All they want, all they pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for him to turn away, to repel, to give them refuge from the torment of Jahannam wal billah. They have the fear of Allah. That's their day and that's their night. And that's their dua. And then Allah goes and describes an aspect 
that may be a little bit surprising. It's their financial dealing. It's their way of life. Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنْفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا And when they spend, they're not extra- extravagant people and they're not miserly or stingy. They are balanced. وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا They strike a good balance. Islam is deen, is a religion of balance. And these are balanced people. Allah says, وَلَا تَجْعَلْ يَدَكَ مَغْلُولَةً إِلَىٰ عُنُقِكَ وَلَا تَبْسُطْحَ كُلَّ الْبَسْطِ فَتَقْعُدَ مَلُومًا مَحْسُورًا Don't hold your hand all the way in and don't stretch it all the way out. And that tells you about the way they deal with everything. They don't go all the way out and they hold, don't hold all the way back. They're balanced people. They're wasat. They are people of moderation. They're people of in moderation in everything. If you have moderation in your infaq, if you have moderation in your ibadah, you have moderation in everything. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّ مَزِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ وَالطَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ Allah says in the Quran, who made haram? زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِهِ the beauty, the ornamentation of Allah that He made for mankind. Some of the Sahaba made it haram for themselves to eat meat or to marry women or to even sleep at night. And the Prophet ﷺ heard about that because when they looked at their ibadah, they said, How can we reach the level? of the Prophet ﷺ. We have to do something a little bit more. And when he heard about that, he said, مَنْ رَغِبَ عَنْ سُنَّتِي فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي This is not from my sunnah. Allah says, كُلُوا وَاشْرَبُوا وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Eat and drink, but don't go into extravagant. Extravagance. Allah does not like that. We have to be mindful of the ni'mah that Allah bestowed upon us. We don't deprive ourselves, but we also, we don't waste. The waste of this country, Wallahi can feed many countries. Sometimes we are in Muslim gatherings, in Muslim feasts, and what's put in the trash can feed many, many hungry people. Wallahi, we will be asked about that on the Day of Judgment. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَا تُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ You will be asked on that day about the bounty. Allah says this is not haram to eat and drink. كُلُوا مِن طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ Eat from the good that we have given to you. وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا But don't waste and don't go into extravagance when we throw the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the garbage. When we have 20 coats in our closet that are not used for years and we know there are people freezing out there that need that. That is Israf, brothers and sisters. And then Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٍ And then we go to the core of the aqidah. And as it seems that it should start with the core of the aqidah, should start with tawheed. But as it is the perfection of the Qur'an and the wisdom of the Qur'an, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts with these other attributes, Allah is highlighting these 
Im- the importance of these things. First, because you know when he says Ibadur Rahman, you know they are people of Tawheed. Then Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخر. Yes, they have perfected their Tawheed. They will call no one with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have pure Tawheed. They're not grave worshippers. They're not of Tama'im. They're not of, of, uh, of Sihr. They're not of the people of Khurafat. They're not people of talismans and, and other things. They are people of pure Tawheed. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٌ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ There are three things, three capital th- sins that they don't get close to. And Allah specifies these things. Why? Why these three things? Because as we started, these عباد Rahman are ordinary people, brothers and sisters. These are not infallible people. These are not people who do not sin. But these are people who will not get to the kabair. And Allah is telling us, to every one of us, you can be one of these people. These three capital sins are major. Shirk, qatlun nafs, wa zina. Shirk is khurujun anil millah, getting out of Islam. Qatl al-nafs is a capital thing. لا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ولا تقرب الزنا إنه كان فاحشة وساء سبيلا. Anything that gets close to zina, it is fahisha, it's lewdness. Anything that leads to zina is to be avoided. ما خلا رجل بامرأة إلا كان الشيطان ثالثهما. There's not a man that is alone with a woman unless Shaytan, the devil, is the third in that gathering. وما يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما. And those who will get to these capital sins, they will have the wrath of Allah and they will have the punishment. يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة. They will be punished multiple folds on the day of judgment. والعياذ بالله. ويخلد فيه مهانة. And they will have eternal tournament. إلا لا إله إلا الله. إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا. Allah opens the door of tawbah even, even for the capital sins, for those who have true repentance. And when that happens, Allah is telling every believer, there is no sin, there is nothing that you would do when you have a true repentance and true sincere tawbah that is too big for the forgiveness and for the, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What would happen when someone will have a true tawbah? إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا أُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will turn the sayyat to hasanat. On that scale, Allah will take those sayyat, those bad deeds, and turn them into hasanat. And in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ smiled. And he was asked, why are you smiling, Ya Rasulullah? He said, I'm smiling because of the smile of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why are you smiling because of the smile of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He said, it is that man who saw his sayyat, his bad deeds being turned into good deeds. And then he asked Allah, how about all those other bad deeds that you veiled for me? Those bad deeds that you're not taking me into account for. He wanted more good. وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابًا And Allah says, those who have tawbah 
and then turn into the good deeds, those have, فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابًا They have the true tawbah and the true repentance before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَشْهَدُونَ الزُّورِ And they will never testify to falsehood. They have the truth and they live the truth and they abide by the truth throughout their life. أَيَكْذِبُ الْمُؤْمِنْ قَالَ لَا A believer never lies. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا And when they pass by vain, by vain talk, they pass like kiram, al-kareem. When he passes by something, he just passed generously by. Doesn't get himself dirty with it. They avoid things that are not of benefit to them. لَا يَكُنْ أَحَدُكُمْ إِمَّا They don't just go with, with the flow. They just don't go with the current. وَإِذَا مَرُّوا بِاللَّغْوِ مَرُّوا كِرَامًا وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِّرُوا بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِمْ لَمْ يَخِرُّوا عَلَيْهَا صُمًّا وَعُمْيَانًا And when they are reminded with the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are not deaf and blind. When they are reminded with the Quran, when they are reminded with the hadith, when they are reminded with the signs and proof of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around them, they don't turn a blind eye and deaf ears to them. They have open hearts and open minds. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ فِي هَذِهِ أَعْمَى فَهُوَ فِي الْآخِرَةِ أَعْمَى وَأَضَلُّ سَبِيلًا Those who turn blind eye to what Allah is showing them in this dunya, they will become even more blind in akhirah وَالْعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ And then finally, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا They say, oh Allah, grant us from our spouses and our offsprings coolness and joy to our eyes and make us للمتقين إماما leaders, examples for the righteous. They care about their families. They care about their spouses. They care about the close people around them. And they care about their communities. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of Ibad rahman We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the dwellers of the ghurfa. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of those who will be greeted, who those who will be receiving the greeting of Allah and the salam of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his forgiveness. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum faya fawza mustaghfirin. Please come forward, inshallah. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على إمام المرسلين وسيد الأولين والآخرين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Brothers and sisters, we started by saying that عباد الرحمن, Allah says, they have a special place, special place in Jannah. Allah says, أولئك يجزون الغرفة. They will be rewarded al ghurfa But then I want to pay a little attention to something in that very last verse. Allah says, Ulaika yujzawna al ghurfata bima sabaru yulaqawna fiha tahiyyatan wa salama. Allah says, They will be given the ghurfa for their patience, for their sabr, for their sabr. يُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا And they will be greeted and they will receive the peace, the salam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it would be nothing wrong, nothing wrong in the grammar and nothing wrong with the meaning if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ يُجْزَوْنَ الْغُرْفَ يُلَقَّوْنَ فِيهَا تَحِيَّةً وَسَلَامًا But then there is a jumla here. There is a sentence called jumlatun i'tiradiyya. There is a sentence that was inserted right in the middle. Allah says, بِمَا صَبَرُوا بِمَا صَبَرُوا That this doesn't come just like that. That this ghurfa doesn't just come 
except with sabr. That these things have to have sabr. You have to have endurance. You have to have perseverance. You have to have persistence on ta'at. But it is something, if you read the description of Ibad rahman one more time, it is something that is achievable by every and single one of us. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of Ibad al-Rahman al-Ladina yamshuna ala al-Ardi hawna. Wa idha khatabahum al-Jahiluna qalu salama. Allahumma ja'alna min al-Ladina yabituna li rabbihim sujjadam wa qiyama. Allahumma ja'alna min al-Ladina yaquluna. اللهم اجعلنا من الذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقر ومقاما اللهم إذا أنفقنا اجعلنا من الذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما اللهم اجعلنا من الموحدين الذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر اللهم اجعلنا من الذين لا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق اللهم اجعلنا من العفيفين الذين لا يزنون يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعلنا من التائبين الذين قبلت توبتهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا أرحم الراحمين اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان اللهم هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم اجزنا الغرفة يا رب العالمين واجعلنا من الصابرين المتقين يا أرحم الراحمين اجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون